What's up, YouTube? It's James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and today we're back with another code review of this super cool uh, Blackjack app that got submitted by JC Smiley. Uh, JC, you might remember his name if you've seen some of the other videos, submitted a resume review, another code review, and I think has done a portfolio review as well. So shout out to JC uh, for submitting all of these. I really appreciate your openness and your uh, ability to take feedback and to seek feedback that's super, super cool as a developer. So uh, first off, just want to say this app is like really, really cool. I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with this. I would be interested to see how I would build this from scratch and what that would look like. Um, but just want to start with the uh, GitHub repo here. Um, one of the things that I gave feedback on your last project was... Um, was having a good readme. And I think you've done a pretty good job here. You got this uh, this GIF or movie, uh, short movie, short clip of how your app works. That's super cool. You got table of contents. You even got wireframe images in here. So I know you've been practicing uh, with Adobe XD for doing wireframes. That's a really cool skill to have uh, for developers out there. Uh, usually, or a lot of us developers, design makes us nervous, but it really helps you actually building something if you have a good design for it beforehand. And I think that's what you've done here. So awesome job in, in taking the time to do the design, but then also sharing those wireframe images here. Uh, also have a how to play. That's super cool. Tells people uh, how to play the game. And you talk about the technologies that you use. Uh, React, which we'll get into in a second. Hosted in GitHub. Uh, WXD for design. And then HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. One thing you could add um, is a lot of developers might look to run this application. So in, or in addition to having how to play, you might have like a how to run as a developer. So usually it's going to be an NPM run start with create react app, which we'll see in a second. You have to install the packages before you do that and so on and so on. So you could go in and just articulate that. Let's see. I want to, I uh, want to just start with a few, um, maybe design tips from my perspective on, um, on the app, and I know that's not really my place sometimes, but I think it. I think it. Uh, I've got a couple of thoughts I just wanted to share that I think would uh, be good. One, I think this nav bar at the top um, could be a little bit bigger. I think you could expand this down to maybe here or so, and have the the bet and the funds a little bit bigger. Uh, it might be cool to have this content a little more centered on the full uh, height of that um, of that board. I would also uh, maybe make the the green, the background, maybe make that go across the entire thing and then just have the content, uh, like the container inside of that uh, full page um, be kind of the width that you have right now. So uh, super cool. Uh, I recommend people going out and checking out this project just because of how cool it is. These animations to get cards in, I'm like really curious how you did that to be honest. That's super cool. Uh, you get all the functionality. Um, you have the ability to hit. Um, let's play again. If I get something that I like, uh, 17, I would probably stand on 17. Um, and it looks like maybe it's, uh, telling me based on the rules of how to play that I should stand. So maybe the user doesn't have the option there, which I think letting users have the option regardless would be good. Yeah. I think you are basing that on the rules because 12, well, 12. Yeah, definitely hit there. Get 15. All right. Anyway, so that's the game. Super, super cool. Let's go ahead and dive into the code. And again, what I've done is I ran uh, npm install any JavaScript, uh, 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 gosh, not package, any JavaScript project that you get, you have to install the packages first. And then after that, uh, it's a create React app project. So npm run start. And a lot of times while that's starting up, there it is. We've already seen it. A lot of times I'll look at the package uh, JSON file first, just to kind of see what kind of packages are being included. Um, React and React DOM or React script, that's kind of included there. There's also Bootstrap and then React Bootstrap. So I commented on the fact that you used React Bootstrap in the last project, and I'll kind of reiterate that um, once we get to one of those components, just to show what that looks like. So pretty standard, um, pretty standard create React at package.json here. Um, and then you've got name here you could add author just to kind of take some ownership of you're the one that created this but there's the package.json so the majority of this content is really going to live in the app js file and if you look at um look at go, going through tutorials and um and other like walkthroughs or things there's you try to limit maybe the things that are in your app uh 
JS. And actually you try to limit things that are in components in general. So this is a component. And the very first thing, very first piece of feedback is that this component is super, super big. So I will try to make some suggestions on how to break this stuff out. Um, but you're going to want to break these things out into smaller pieces so that you don't have a file that's this big because when someone comes into this and honestly when you come back to this file after a couple of months of not seeing it it's going to be pretty difficult <clears throat> to jump into a file this big and then find exactly what you're looking for honestly so uh, i'll give you a couple of ways uh, as we talk through this of how to break this out the first thing is the f when i played the game got to scroll down here for a while to get to the jsx uh, when i played the game i noticed if you look at um start here at localhost if you start here at the home page you click play it doesn't ask actually switch pages so you're staying on that same page which shows me and this is what we'll see in a second is that you're doing some conditional logic in the jsx to display basically the different pages and you have a let's see so you have a uh, end screen here which is different than your home screen but just barely um, anyway so you've got at least a, two pages, home and then game, and then an end page that looks very similar to home. You can actually make those into separate pages themselves by using a uh, React Router that's on NPM here. So with a React Router, you can define your, I guess it doesn't show a good example of this, but um, you can sh define which pages to show at which URL based on a certain component. So the way that you're doing checks in here, looking at state for start play. So basically, are you on the start page or are you on the uh, play game page or, and you've got an end game component here, um, you're conditionally displaying those. You could actually use React Router to have React Router uh, take care of that and then just navigate between those uh, three different pages. I would recommend doing that. I think that's one way to clean up a lot of this code. I think one of the big problems you're gonna have though is all of this code is pretty dependent upon all of this state. So you're using, and this is what a lot of people do, is use uh, the app.js to contain all of the state basically that all of the different components will need or all the props that the, <laughs> the lower level components will need. So you're using it in this component to do a lot of logic and then passing a lot of these properties to other components as props. And you get into something uh, potentially at scale of something called prop drilling where you're passing down props and passing them down and down and down into a component. So one thing that you could look into is um, I've been into the React Context API. So this is a way to share different pieces of information uh, with different components while not having to pass them uh, through different components doing something called prop drilling. So uh, Context API might help you kind of organize where different pieces of state live that might facilitate making it easier to break these components out into separate pages, have those pages only get the, the state that they need, and then uh, you're, you're able to clean up your app.js along the way. So uh, overall theme is app.js is pretty big, want to try to break it out. You can use React Router to take care of that conditional logic of when to show certain components by having them associated with um, different URLs and what that would look like if I wasn't clear on this, uh, you basically have like your home page, and then something like game and then something like slash end and those would be three separate pages. And then you could use the react context API to, uh, to kind of share state only where it's needed, if that makes sense. Alright, so I'm going to scroll down here, I've got some notes that I'm going to look at. Uh, let's see. Alright, so just kind of going down here, You've got your deal cards and this will, this is actually kind of cool. So that animation that you have where you deal like one card at a time, what you do is you deal one card to the dealer, then you wait a second and deal a card to the player and then you wait a, another second, so two seconds from the original and you deal another player card and then at the third second you deal a card to the dealer. This is, uh, this is actually like, I think that's super cool. Um, I was wondering, I was trying to do this in my head to refactor this to where you do some sort of like, how do I put this, like iterate through an array or do a set uh, set interval and every second you deal a new card and then you do some logic to figure out how to cancel that interval so you only do it four times. And I think I was probably making that a little bit convoluted in my head. Um, I think this is cool. I don't have I don't have an obvious way to, to change this out. So I think this is cool. Um, 
to do it this way where you do the delay. And it seems really simple, but it obviously works for what you're trying to accomplish. And again, those animations are just honestly really badass. I'm really jealous of, of how you did that. Super cool. Um, one, oh, here. So one thing that I wanted to mention is you're getting a reference to uh, the dealer stack. And the dealer stack on the state is an array. And you're getting a reference to it and then uh, creating a variable called hand um, from that variable. So what happens is this doesn't actually make a true copy of this array. Hand is not going to be a copy of this dealer stack array. What this means is you basically have uh, the dealer stack uh, variable points to an array, and now the hand variable actually points to that exact same array. So you're getting into, uh, when you push something to the hand array, you're actually also pointing it to the array that the dealer stack points to because they both point to the same array. So you've, you've more or less kind of behind the scenes updated dealer stack that's on the state, which is not something you wanna do. So to make a true copy of a dealer stack, you can do uh, use the spread operator. So you can take each element from dealer stack and put it in a new array, and that's what hand will then point to. So this makes a true copy of the dealer stack array with one caveat. I'm assuming, and I don't actually know what goes in this dealer stack array exactly. If primitive values like numbers and strings are inside of that array, it will make a full copy of that dealer stack array. If it's objects that are inside of that dealer stack array, it will only make a shallow copy of the array. And so you're not quite fixing the problem anyway. Go do some research into copying, uh, copying objects and arrays and then uh, deep copy or deep clone versus uh, shallow copy, shallow clone. Look into that just so you understand, but just wanted you to know that this does not make a true copy of this array. So by pushing something onto hand, in effect, it's actually pushing it onto dealer stack as well. Something you can think about uh, a little bit later on. All right, so you've got a function here for uh, random card. I would update that naming to be get random card just to be a little more explicit. And you've got a function below that uses the get as a prefix to a function name. So you're familiar with that. Uh, you might've just overlooked it or just didn't think about it. So for that one, I would rename it to uh, get random card. And uh, actually more precisely, this might be either, so right now what you're uh, returning is a random number. So I would call this uh, get random card number or use that integer in here to now return the actual random card. That way get random card is specifically saying that you want to get a random card, not a random index. If you wanted to return, leave it the way you have it, I would update this to get random card index, something like that. Just to make your function names have a tad bit more meaning. Whew. All right, so deal a card, looking at a stack of cards. Um, again, this is not making a copy of the card, of the stack of cards. So this is, um, Actually, you, you could just you reference stack of cards directly and never have a reference or a variable called hand because they're basically the same thing because you're not making a true copy. So um, again, this is where you get a little bit of confusion uh, because this is random card. Uh, if you named it get random card, then, um, then it's a little confusing to then have the variable be called uh, card number if you, um, if you renamed this to get random card index and then had get random card index, then this comment is unnecessary, right? Because your function tells you exactly what you're getting and then your variable name, especially if you name this card index, now everything is more in line. Readability has actually really improved. You don't need that comment you know what you're getting and your variable name reflects what you're getting from that function. I'm gonna undo this just so I don't mess it up. But just some things to think about of making sure that your naming of your functions match exactly what you want them to do. Let's see, all right, that, I think that's the way it was, cool. Um, cool, so then you're, you're getting a random card, but then you're checking if that random card has already been played. If it has, you're getting another random card. So what you're doing is you have an array of all the cards, you get a random index, then you pull that random card out of that array and you have to check whether or not that array has been played. 
this probably doesn't quite do exactly what you're thinking. You're only checking um, once to see if that card has been played, but you have no idea if this new card has been played. So the second you might get a used card and then get a used card again and you're not handling that case. So typically that would be something like a while, uh, while the card has been played, then get the new card. All right, something like this. So while that card has been played, update card number to another random card. And then when you get down with that while loop, set the thing, uh, make sure that that card gets referenced as true or updated, played to be true. So you could do something like this. The problem with this is if you end up using a ton of cards and let's say you have a 52 index array and you've only got two cards that have not been played, the chances of you getting a random number that fit those two unplayed cards is really low. So you could potentially do this while loop a lot before you get one of those indices that works. One thing you could do is uh, your cards, you could remove cards from that list after you've used them. That way you can always get a random number of the available cards that you have. So you might keep all of the cards, then you might make a separate array that is cards that have not been used maybe, and you remove ones that have been used. That way you get a random, random index from that array, which is smaller, and you're always guaranteed to have a card that you haven't used. Hopefully that makes sense there. So again, uh, you start off with, I think you think you're making a copy of, oops, uh, the stack of cards, but you're not quite. So then you update the stack of cards in the state with the, uh, with the hand variable. And um, just, just remember that you're not quite making a, a true copy of this thing. So you're actually kind of already editing stack of cards by itself. Whew. All right, so get points total. Um, this is actually, so like the logic of blackjack is not super simple. So at this point, you're um, checking to see if there's any aces and um, so you're doing, you're iterating through the deck and you're looking for if, um, if that card's value is 11 then increase found aces. That's pretty cool. Uh, otherwise you are, um, you're adding that total to your, uh, total score. One thing you could do is take deck and do a for each and get a reference to a card like that. And then inside of there, you can move that up. Let's see if that's making sense. And instead of using deck of I, you would just have card, card. All right, so the for each is just a little bit cleaner. Maybe you can combine it with an error function like this. It looks a little bit cleaner. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's, uh, that's good for there. Um, if found aces. So if there's an ace in the hand, then you have to do some logic to figure out whether an ace counts as an 11 or a one. So you go through uh, all of the found aces. If the total plus 11 is greater than 21, then uh, total plus equals two. I don't know why it's two here and not one. I think I'm pretty sure aces are just one. So maybe this should be one. I'm not sure. All right, I thought I was sure. Anyway, so you either add 11 or one or two, uh, depending on if the user would bust with the previous ace. This is actually like some pretty cool logic to have to figure out. So that's actually really impressive. Good job with that. All right, so we have the ability to increase a bet here. Um, looks like if you if your current bet, if you're trying to bet more than the funds that you have, then it um, it just sets your current bet back down to five. Um, I'm wondering you might not you might could do like if it you don't so I'm trying to think out loud. If your current bet is ten and you have ten dollars and you try to increase the bet, you don't necessarily want to set it back to five. You might just do nothing. So if if you're trying to bet too much, you might just return. Otherwise, you'll update your state to add five to the bet. And I think you could even do it this way. So if um, if the current bet is, or actually let's do this. If the current bet is not, current bet not, 
or all right, when do we want to let them bet? If the current bet is still less than or equal to the funds. So if the if the current bet is less than or equal to the funds, um, then set the state to increase it by five. I think I'm missing a piece of logic in here, so you'll have to double check me on this review. But um, one thing you don't necessarily have to do is you are getting a reference to the previous state and then using that, you can actually just get rid of the previous state reference and then use uh, this dot state dot current bet. So this dot state dot current bet will get you that the current value of the state and you can take out the value of the previous state and just add, add five to that thing. So it simplifies it just a little bit. And again, double, double check this because I think I think you might be setting the current bet before you get to increase bet. Um, anyway, I think you can shorten it up, but you'll have to double check to make sure that that makes sense. Got a start game function, set some state, deal some cards, makes sense. Um, end game, I would name this function something, display end game, or maybe you're just saying end the game. Eh, it's a little ambiguous, but uh, maybe not a big deal. Um, I see you check to see if the user wins by, and you've got it explained here in the comments, um, if the player's total is less than or equal to 21 and the uh, player's total is greater than the dealer or the dealer busts and the, uh, the player is less than 21. Uh, those seem like the right conditions. I might add a little helper function called um, did dealer or did uh, player win something like this and then return this logic because that's kind of a lot to put right there um, so I would call did dealer win and I guess that will be a this dot this dot did dealer win and oh did I not paste that stuff up here anyway I might create that in a separate little helper function that way it'll clean up this logic and then have that kind of complicated if in its own function and I'll undo this so I don't mess it up because I never actually pasted that stuff in. I think you could clean it up a little bit by putting it in something else. Um, inside of here, again, you don't necessarily have to use previous state. You can do this and this and just call this this.state. All right, so you could do that. Else if uh, the game is a tie, um, then uh, game results is a push, makes sense. Otherwise you lose and don't have to use previous state there. So you can update that. And then you do a set state uh, to switch to the end game component. Now this is where, this is where you could navigate to the end page and kind of separate out your components where they're on completely different pages and they only need specific pieces of um, state. So like the state that the end page would need, let's see, end page will, oh, I broke it. That's probably me, sorry. <laughs> um, the end page will only need a few things like score and then whether the text of whether or not you won or push or things like that. So it could get those pieces from the context API. Um, all right, so you got a lot, I'm not even gonna be able to go through all of this logic, um, but you're cut, you're, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, a lot of logic that goes into blackjack. Um, player double down, players double down. You get like two separate bets, or no, you double down. Not a not a split, but anyway, I haven't played blackjack in a while. Um, pulsing check. Uh, I guess this is oh, this is just adding a pulse animation. Set the animation for the red check on the start and end component to pulse. Cool. Um, all right, then you get down into here. One, you are using uh, React Bootstrap, which gives you components that match up with React, or excuse me, Bootstrap classes. I, I still think that's cool. I haven't used it myself still, uh, but it is pretty cool. Then you're doing your manual checking of which, basically which page to display, right? And we talked about you could split this out using React Router and have it take care of that logic for you. Let's go over to a couple of the different pages Let's see, again, using uh, React Bootstrap, you even get columns and um, you can add some additional classes here to style your nav bar. Again, styling wise, I would make that a little bit bigger. Um, let's go into the play area. I think this is pretty cool that you can do, um, the columns can take sizes in uh, what uh, React Bootstrap 
that's actually like pretty cool. I, again, still haven't used it, but I think that's cool. Um, there was another one in here. So at this point, this is starting to get, um, I'm wondering if some of that is necessary. I don't feel like doing all the thinking to figure out what that is, but I don't see a whole lot of, well, this, if I refresh, okay. I don't see a whole lot of like resizing going on. So I'm wondering how you're using the, um, the columns and what page was that on? That was on play game. If I just don't get dizzy watching this, but I'm just going to undo every change I made. Cause obviously I broke something and actually I'm just going to close it and don't save. So let's go into the play game. Do you have a lot of, Oh, did I, I must've saved something and broke it. See, that's why I try not to save stuff. So it's calling random card. Oh, this one. All right. Sorry about that. So let's see if we can get this page to show. I'm not seeing things really reordering much. So I'm not sure how you're using those columns. Usually you use the grid and bootstrap to reorder or resize things uh, based on the screen real estate. And I'm not really seeing that. So I'm wondering what you're using it for. Also might, um, Maybe just to kind of get some extra practice with CSS, you can get away from the bootstrap um, grid system and get into something like um, get into something like Flexbox or a CSS grid just to get some extra practice. Let's see if there's any. Can't remember if there's any other thoughts I had on that. Oh, one thing I did want to mention uh, under this assets directory, you've got uh, PNGs for each one of the different cards. I'm wondering if you can make that some sort of dynamic where you have like a card background that you display and then you just put the text for that card on top of it. Um, this is potentially a lot of images, image requests to make to be able to play the game. So I, I would think about trying to make that dynamic where you have just like a card background and then you put the text on top of it that you need. Might work out that way. Good use of people that are new to React. Uh, this is actually something that's really confusing. Good use of the map inside of JSX. So this is taking all the cards that you have. It's getting a reference to, um, I would have thought each card. Uh, so I, either that naming is a little uh, confusing to me. Usually you have an array that ends in an S like cards and then each one is a card. Um, but I don't know that that's true. So, um, or I'm a little bit confused by your naming. Another thing you could do is you can make this an arrow function and just make it um, a little bit simpler. And you could also take away the uh, return by doing implicit return with, uh, with JSX. And to do that, you have to surround your JSX with that and then save it. And that's gonna just kind of make it a little bit nicer. Uh, also, so ID here, that's, probably just to make sure you know what that is id is not like an, a unique id necessarily it's a it's just the index of that item in the array and they i've seen in in like some warning messages i think before not to use array id as the key um as things shift if if that array were to change those ids might I'm not really sure actually, so I would have to look into that, but just know that this is actually the index of the item that you're looking at. Um, and then I would think that would be card cards given. I would think that just makes more sense. So naming, naming consistency might help clear up some of that stuff there. Um, another thing with the, the bootstrap, um, components is you can add these little ones. So instead of adding classes, now you can just tell it rounded fluid. That's kind of cool too. Cool. So uh, I want to kind of wrap this up. This has been a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but I've had a lot of fun going through this and uh, just want to reiterate JC. I really appreciate you sending in, Oh, I stopped it. Sending in all of these uh, projects to be reviewed. Uh, I really admire all the projects that you're working on. It's really great that you have the passion and drive to do this and then are willing to share. That's super, super cool. I wanted to share with everyone, um, again, JC Smiley 4 on Twitter. Uh, I enjoy following him for his 100 Days of Code uh, posts. And uh, he posts a lot about the stuff that he's doing. Like, actually, there's a tweet for me. Um, anyway, he's active on Twitter. He's active in the community. I would go ahead and give him a follow if you haven't. 
I think he's got some great stuff on Twitter. So that's going to wrap up this, um, this code review. If you guys are interested, you can check out his GitHub as well, JC Smiley Jr. And then the Blackjack Project is what we just did. So I want to thank everyone for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it, JC. Hopefully you got something out of it. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.